Eli, I'm so glad that you came in for us to check your teeth. And you are really a good patient, I can tell. And I'm glad Mommy thought it was a real good idea for you to see us. Can I count your teeth and see how many you have? No one wants to fear the dentist, and the experts agree starting visits early can minimize any trauma. Parents create bad dental children by relaying their own fears to their children. If we can see the child before they have a chance to get afraid, uh, I tell you, any one of the doctors in this practice are good with children, and we can turn them into good dental, you know. Actually, the best dental patients, children patients I have is when the mom actually brings the child in the baby carrier when she gets her teeth cleaned. This way the child is used to the noises, the smells, and so they actually remember that even though they're, you know, an infant. This whole process should start early, yes, even as early as an infant. There is a, a new concept that uh, is coming out with the Pediatric Dentist Association saying that uh, indeed this one and one kind of examination does a lot of interceptive problem solving early on. In fact, to the point where the child is placed in the parent's lap and we mutually examine that child uh, and uh, the parent can voice any kind of concerns. General routine care should be customized for younger children. Some need to be seen every six months, others don't. But one grim statistic should get every parent's attention. One out of every four children has a cavity developed by the time they're three or four years old. And it all starts with what we put into our mouths. All of us have bacteria in our mouths, and that bacteria is usually in the form of plaque. And what happens is uh, any foods that we eat that contain sugar, the bacteria that's in that plaque tend to feed on the sugar. Once they do, they release acid, and the acid is what causes the tooth decay. There are good foods to eat to keep us healthy and ones that are not so good. But the catch is even the good ones can contain sugar. So the biggest concern is what to do with all those leftover sugars in our mouths. A very simple uh, technique that I tell my patients is to rinse your mouth out with water. Um, if you've had a soda or you've just got done with a meal and you're not accessible to toothbrush, simply find some tap water, rinse out, and what you're doing is breaking up that sugar coating. Nowadays with kids are drinking a lot more bottled water and not back together for me. But there you go. I don't, she looks pretty good as far as going to orthodontist, but we might want to get her using some supplemental fluoride because of the bottled water, you know, everybody's drinking, kids oh, are drinking, okay. and the energy drinks that kids are drinking and all. You heard right. That bottled water you're giving your children probably doesn't contain fluoride. So you need to cut back and make sure they drink tap water from a municipal system. Accidents are inevitable with children. Summer, school, and sports can mean unexpected trips to the dentist. You know, the other thing that's happening in the summer uh, developmentally is, you know, is kids playing baseball, soccer. You know, they're just starting to get in athletics at that age. Uh, teeth getting convulsed or knocked out. You know, if it's a baby tooth, it's not a problem. You know, there's going to be bleeding and it's traumatic to the, to the parent, but, you know, as far as the future health of the, the, the dentition, it's not a problem. If it's a permanent tooth, the best thing the parent can do is place the tooth actually in the, in the child's cheek. Keep it moist in the cheek. That uh, keeps the cells alive so that actually if they get in in time in that same day, we can re-implant that tooth and bond it and it will, buy, it will uh, attach back and they can keep it the rest of their life. Now one of the things we want to see is whether or not you need to have orthodontics done. Another milestone in making sure your child has proper dental care is seeing if they need braces. Those checkups are happening much earlier in their lives. When I first started practicing, they wanted to see them at 13 or 14. They now want to see the kids, if they're partially uh, permanent teeth, they're wanting to see them six, seven, eight years old. So, so that they can monitor the growth, they take a special x-ray called a cephalometric x-ray, which they can predict the growth pattern and predict the crowding. They can predict whether they're not going to need full uh, orthodontics or not, and maybe do something that saved the parents a lot of money by, by coming in early. Dentists are fully aware the biggest obstacle for many children and adults is fear. They overcome that by building trust. 
What we tell people is you have to put good thinking on top of stinking thinking. And so we, we do that a little bit at a time. And it starts with our young kids that we, we bring them in and do something in the office that, it, that doesn't hurt, that is comfortable and maybe even a little fun. And you begin to get used to the sights, sounds and smells of the dental office. And gradually you build that up to actually going in and doing some type of treatment and doing it without having any pain uh, involved and, and then coming back.